All right, let's talk now about what's going to kind of pull this whole group together, create the alignment, get us all on the same page, help us build the strategy to go make this thing happen. What is your vision? Let's talk about vision first. What's the definition of vision? It's that act or power of imagining. In other words, I'm going to imagine what I want, see, conceive, see my picture out there of us, whatever that is. So in order to do that, I just want to take you through and give you a concept I call the million dollar producer concept to start to try to galvanize you, get you thinking about something and, and, and give you a chance to start to get out your own vision. What is the million dollar producer concept? Well, the million dollar producer concept is if I were talking to a producer right now, I'd be asking them as a producer, how can you double your revenue, doing it about a three year period of time, and do it with half as many accounts. Now you say, well, why half as many accounts? Well, here's the problem. Almost every producer I know, once they get you know, uh, you know, above that, that threshold called successful, the number one enemy becomes time and lack of time. So the whole deal here is, how do I double my revenue in three years with half as many accounts rather than how do I double my revenue in three years with twice as many accounts? The problem with twice as many accounts it's twice as much work, run out of time, and then all of a sudden they plateau out and growth is dead. So, what's the formula? Well, number one, as a producer, I need to position my book of business for both profitability to the firm and growth for myself by taking the top 20% of my accounts that make about 80% of my money and put them on some sort of written services timeline, written service plan. And as I do start to put my client on this written service plan, Renewals become much less of an issue. The predictability for that client, they know exactly what's going to happen. It wedge-proofs them so other people can't come in and penetrate that. We keep that piece of business. Now, what kind of calls that out is, what am I going to do if I sit there and start to look at, here's the top 20% of my accounts, what happens to the bottom 80% of my accounts? Well, that's going to take care of itself over time. We'll get into that concept in a moment. But what is for certain is the question of what are you doing for those top 20% of your accounts? And see here, if, I went, if, I, if you hired me as a marketing research person and you paid me to go out and talk to your best accounts and I'm interviewing those best accounts saying, hey, what's your agent gonna do for you over the next 12, 24, 36 months? What are they gonna say? Well, they're gonna go, oh, well, Randy, I mean, they're, they're nice people, really like them, they do a good job, you know, we got a good relationship. You know, if I got a problem, they respond. I know they got a Blackberry, we send them an email, they get back to us, it's good. Would they say that, or would they say, Randy, what are they gonna do? Well, I don't know, here, here, here's a plan of action. Here shows when they're gonna do the claims review, payroll review, update the business interruption, make sure my property values are right, start my marketing strategy, bring back my renewal. I know exactly what's gonna happen. Here's what they're gonna do. If I went and talked to your top accounts, would they say that, or would they say that? And of course, you know the power is if they could say that rather than that, your retention would go up, the confidence of your producers would go up. But I know there's challenges behind it. Hang on with that. But I want you to start thinking about this deal. How can your producers double their revenue three years with half as many accounts? Number one starts off with positioning that book of business by taking the top 20% of the accounts and put them on a written service plan, over serving those people, making renewals a non issue. What happens next? Well, then they've earned the right to then go leverage those accounts to get introduced in to who they know. See, here's what I know, is that if I took 20 producers and had them sitting in a room, and I'm asking those 20 producers in the last 90 days, how many times have you leveraged your top accounts to get introduced into who they know? The answer is generally about two out of 20 raise their hands, the other 18 don't. And all that says to me and maybe says to you too is that there's a ton of relationships that our producers have that they're not leveraging for introductions into who they know. And when you sit there and think about what's the best way to get a new prospect, well, I mean, if I could get my best clients to introduce me in, my chance of writing them goes way up. And when you think about a lot of the clients that we want to write won't see us. They won't take our phone calls. How are we going to get into them? Through introduction. And then once we get introduced in, Next thing is we go grow by wedging out the competition. And here's what I want you to really think about, is that what brings all this stuff together is that when you as a firm are committed to being a proactive services firm, 
In other words, you got your product services well defined, then it's these proactive services that really make up your written service timeline. That's what goes on them. As these written service timelines are being done and proactive services are being performed, now your best clients have in a sense got bragging rights. They got a better story to tell about your producers. Your producers have more confidence about asking them to tell that story. Introductions go up. And then you take those same proactive service and use that to go then wedge out the competition. And that's how you increase your winning chances. So retention goes up. Growth goes up, we get growth as a firm. So let's talk about that for just a moment. When I break our business down to three major components, they are price, coverage, and service, and hopefully you agree with me. And see, the key question is for you, is price a sustainable competitive advantage? Now when I ask most people that, they go, hmm, not really. We represent a lot of the same carriers everybody else does. Last guy in generally wins. No. Then I'll sit there and go, is coverage for you a sustainable competitive advantage? And yeah, every once in a while we'll get somebody that's really good at you know, doing something or, or they, they set up a special deal with a captive in Bermuda or something like that. But in most cases, about 99% of the people tell me, no, not really. Coverage is not a sustainable competitive advantage for us. And then the third question becomes about service. Now, when I get people to start talking about their service and you listen to them carefully, what they generally start describing is their ability to react. In other words, if the client has a claim, they'll help get it reported. The client you know, needs a cert, they'll get it out. The client bought a building, we'll get it insured. You know, if something goes wrong, boom, we're there to react, to respond, to help them out. The problem is that the standards are up here pretty high. And a lot of your competitors are meeting those standards. And it's hard to trump the competition on a consistent basis through reactive services. So what's the other category? We'll call them proactive services. And what I know is that when your proactive services are well defined, then basically it becomes the proactive services that you and your producers do that the incumbent does not do is where your prospects are being underserved, they just don't know it. So the more defined these proactive services are, the more you can use them to drive a wedge between your prospect and the incumbent. The less defined these proactive services are, the harder it is for you to get traction off of all your quote unquote value added, you know, what you do and that sort of thing. So going back to the concept is this, is if we can get you committed to proactive services, over serving your best accounts, then you can get more introductions, go in and wedge out the competition, and then the last step of this whole thing is keep score. Because as a firm, you want the average revenue per account or average revenue per relationship to go which way? Well, obviously up. You want your closing ratio to go which way? Well, obviously it's up. You want the numbers of, of accounts you get by BOR or agent record letter to go which way? Up. And so really the million dollar producer concept for, for, for many of our wedge sales culture clients becomes kind of the, the galvanizing piece of this whole thing because out of this is a whole bunch of philosophical stuff and I want you to hear this for, for me if you will. When you start to own that concept, first of all, your clients are better off. CBO, clients are better off. Why? Well, as you put the written service plan in place, their future becomes a lot more predictable. They know what's going to happen. They don't have to guess about it. They're better off. They're getting better served. They've got a lot more predictability in how they're going to be taken care of. Well, so it's pretty client-focused, isn't it? But not only that, as you start to do that, now your producer's confidence goes up as they do this, and it becomes an agency initiative, not just a one-off initiative. And they get better at really leveraging and, 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 and prospecting better accounts, bigger accounts with more revenue that creates more growth for you. That's a huge win-win. Not only that, but as you start to get this philosophy really well-defined, your customer support and CSRs, now they've got more direction in terms of what they're supposed to do and, and what role and game they're supposed to play. And so when you start to pull this whole thing together, here's what I want you to see. Experience says, owners like it, they get better, faster, more predictable growth. Sales managers like it, they've got something more effective to manage too. 
Producers like it, it radically increases their chance of growing. Customer support likes it because they know exactly what they're supposed to do. And now through that process, we start to galvanize, pull everybody together, moving in the same direction. So please take a moment and just kind of have a discussion around these issues of alignment, your thoughts around the million dollar producer concept, and whatever concerns you might have, let's go.